Hey, uh, this is Mark from Mobile Diesel. I'm working on an O and generator. It powers a medical unit here in Durham. And um, right now I have what's called a Code 19, which is the injector pump actuator. And uh, there isn't a lot of info. I couldn't find anything on YouTube on this one. So I thought it was worth uh, making a video. So the injector pump actuator is this guy here, but I'm just going to go through the whole process. So uh, right now the battery is disconnected, but this is the battery switch, and there's like a bazillion videos on how to pull the codes, but essentially if you try to start it and it starts to blink, and it's not one of these main codes here, one, two, or three, with the blink then it's called a secondary, and if it's a secondary you just do another one of those pushes like that, and it'll give you a Morse code. The first digit is going to be a one through five, a lot of folks say three, but the newer ones go all the way up to five. So it's a one through five, then a pause, and then a one through nine. So when I did that, I got a one blink, a pause, and then nine blinks, which is code 19, which is injector pump actuator. And so forgive um, this being a little funky. Um, I just wanted to make a video. Uh, the battery's disconnected now, so I'm not gonna, and I'm only using one hand, so I'm just gonna go through the motion. So. Anyway, the flow chart says first you got to check the actual actuator itself. So instead of a, uh, a cutoff solenoid, which is on and off for the injector pump, you need to be able to actuate how much of a stroke the pump uses depending on the electrical load. So instead of a person with an accelerator cable on their foot, and of course, since it's a generator, you use a transformer, 12 volt signal through this guy and ground and it goes into here. So the first test is to make sure the actuator is good. So you've put an ohmmeter between uh, male spade one and male spade two. You're going to you're supposed to get anywhere from 1.7 to 12.8 ohms. I'm getting two ohms. So this guy's a pass. This spring is in place. This actuation of the rod works perfectly. So there's nothing wrong with this. And then they want you to check one of these guys is a 12 volt wire. This guy here, I'm sorry, this is the ground wire in red. Don't ask me why, but it's a E1 2 ground. So they want you to check the signal between here and the body of the motor and confirm you got a healthy ground. And that passed. And then this guy here, they want you to check between the ECM this comes out of the ECM it's a P1-1 E1-1 on the flow chart they call it a P1-1 but it's both so you check between here and the control panel which is the gray plug not the black plug and that is going to be the upper left guy, which is this. And they say if you don't get healthy resistance, like 0.01 ohms, then change the harness. It's never this. But anyways, upper left, if you're looking at the back of it, it's a P1-E1. Same as before. p one one E1-1. So that's connected to the blue wire here. That was a pass. And then here you've got these two fuses, right? And they're feeding the computer. You've got a total of three. The larger one, the 25 amper over here is for the battery charger, but these two feed the ECM for signals for um, glow plug, and the other one is for everything else. And we don't really care about the glow plug one, but we care about the everyone else because the signal's not being sent. And the everyone else is these guys down here. So if you're looking at it, it's going to be the lower right two. One is ground and one is positive. And the positive one is thicker. So this is the positive. And then this is the ground all the way to the the right bottom row and they'll say it right on there I'm going to try to pull it ah. 
Sorry. It's hard to do this with one hand. So you have a P1-7 ground. That's been checked. That's pass. And then you got a battery. The thick guy right here. Uh, it'll say it also on the Cummins flow chart, but it's a P1-8 F1. The chart, I just put the code on Google and it gave me a free PDF directly from the Cummins website. So Google used to be great, then it got crappy for about a year and a half, and they've been stepping up their game again. I don't know what happened, but it was agony for about 18 months. Anyways, this is a fail. So somewhere between here and here, something wacky is going on. So I got to take the front cover off. I don't know what's going on. And the wires are thinner. These are actually thinner, the main feed line. So I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, so this panel here is coming off. And I got to figure out what's going on. Why is it a healthy voltage here? and not at the plug. Um, final thing is, it's really good to use a big old school carbon pile load tester on the battery points here, because a lot of times you'll get voltage that appears to be healthy, but under load it'll plummet. So voltage and amperage, which is what this measures, are, are not linear. They're not connected with each other. Most people think they are, but they're not. So even if you have healthy voltage, you got to check it under load and this past that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to post the video now.